answering the most asked and the most common questions about product management as quickly, as briefly, and as rapid fire as I possibly can. Let's go. How do you get into product management? There is no set path, but you can try an associate product manager program. You can look for a related relevant role like a business analyst and then make the transition, or you can build something yourself from scratch or join a startup and do as much as you possibly can. Do you need to know how to code? No, absolutely not. Do you need to be technical? Not necessarily. It's really helpful to understand technology and to communicate effectively with engineers, but it is certainly not mandatory. What PM course should I do? Don't do any courses, especially not ones that you have to pay for. Use as many free resources as you possibly can, including YouTube channels like this one, and then try and build something yourself. Something really small will even do. And then if you feel like you still have some gaps you want to fill through more of a structured learning environment like a course, maybe then it will be helpful. Do I need an MBA? No, you do not need an MBA. And if you are considering getting one purely to get into product, I would ask you to reconsider and instead spend some time building a product from scratch or working in a startup instead. What are some common mistakes that product managers make? Telling engineers what to do instead of partnering and collaborating with them. Not talking to customers and truly understanding what it is that they want. Saying yes to everything or not saying no enough. Doing work because it seems like a good idea. Not prioritizing what is actually important and valuable, to name a few off the top of my head. How should you spend your first 30 days in a new product manager role? Meet everyone you possibly can and ask them lots of questions and even the same questions to understand how their perspectives differ depending on their role. Set up a trial account for the products that you will be looking after. Go and set up trial accounts to your competitor products. Spend some time with your customer support team to understand what issues they are seeing come directly through from customers. Spend time with engineering, ask them lots of questions, get them to explain their frustrations, get them to draw diagrams on a board and explain how the whole product is put together and how it works. And lastly, do not change anything too quickly. Observe, listen, process, digest. Oh, and try and meet a few customers and play the product manager newbie card to get everything you can out of them. How do I get experience in product when I cannot find a product manager role? One is to get experience in related roles like business analyst, data analyst, scrum master, even project manager or customer success manager. Secondly, create your own experience. Find products that you already use and analyze them and review them and write a blog about what you think they can do better or what they can improve create a fake roadmap, publish it on Medium or LinkedIn, and really craft that experience for yourself based on products you are already using. And thirdly, solve a problem that you already have. You don't have to code a product, but you can identify a problem, do a business model canvas, do some market research, do some surveys, think of your solution and do some wireframes and some mockups, use some no-code tools, put a prototype together, put a landing page together, think about how you might market this product, go through the entire life cycle of bringing a product to life, document it if you can, and there is your product experience, put that on your CV. Or you can also join a startup and do anything and everything you possibly can because startups are chaotic and hectic and you will get exposure to the product most likely no matter what your actual role is. Do you need to be commercially minded? Yes. It is very helpful if you understand a little bit of finance. While it's not mandatory when you first begin, it becomes really critical as you grow through your product career. So yes, it is very helpful to understand the business and commercial aspects of a product. What does a product manager do? There is no single definition that encapsulates everything a product manager does. However, in summary, they define a product vision, strategy, and roadmap, and then they work with a cross-functional team to bring that product vision to life. And all of this is done to solve a customer problem and achieve business growth. What is the difference between a product manager and a project manager? Big difference, a product manager focuses on the product that is solving a customer problem and the product life cycle, whereas a project manager focuses on the execution of a project, delivery timeline, coordination between teams and dependencies across teams and products. The product manager is responsible for the success of the product. They are the domain expert. They are determining what the product strategy, roadmap, features, and vision are. The project manager is ensuring that things run smoothly and they are communicating timelines, expectations, and risks 
with stakeholders internally and possibly externally as well. What is the difference between a product manager and a product owner? Not every company has both a PO and a PM. If you only have a single role, you will do everything strategic and tactical for that product. If you have both, the product owner is doing a lot of the tactical work. They are working with the product development team, focusing on delivery, grooming the backlog, helping to run the sprints, of course, still talking to customers, writing product requirements, working with design. And then the product manager is doing more strategic work, defining longer term roadmaps, doing a lot of the strategic thinking and direction of that product area, doing a lot of communication and collaboration, working with other product teams. The product owner probably lives a little bit more in the future, planning for what is coming next. And the product owner likely lives in today and executing what needs to be done right now. The product owner also likely reports into the product manager. I personally don't like or agree with the model of having both a PM and a PO. I think it makes sense for one person to own both, but it depends on so many factors, but it depends on the company, the team, the complexity and nature of the product, resourcing, etc. Who does a product manager work with? Everyone. Engineering, design, product marketing, sales, customer success, customer support, legal, architecture, security, stakeholders, possibly other product teams, other product managers, leadership teams, executives, you name it, vendors, everyone. How does a product manager work with cross-functional teams? Uh, essentially by communicating with them. There are lots of different ways and cadences and tools and techniques for how you do this. But ultimately, it's really important to make sure that you are keeping all of those cross-functional teams on the same page and you are tailoring your communication to who you are speaking to in different cross-functional areas. The way you might speak to product marketing is gonna be very different to how you might speak with security, to how you might speak with engineering, to how you might speak and work with design. So keep that tailoring in mind. How do I work effectively with my engineering team? Treat them as your partner and as your equal, first and foremost. Secondly, find one or two allies in your engineering team, likely your engineering manager or your tech lead or maybe one senior engineer who you can really build a solid partnership and trust with. Third, ask them questions, especially while you are new. Question asking because they love to explain how things work and run your ideas and thoughts past them as a regular thing that you do because you will build better ideas that way and they will feel included in the process and avoid just telling them what to do and just presenting, let's say, a fully prepared roadmap that they just have to execute. Understand their problems because engineering has their own challenges, technical debt, resourcing. They are often managing many, many engineers. So it's important for you to be a partner to them just as much as you're looking for them to be a partner to you. Bring them along to customer sessions, bring them along sometimes to other business relevant sessions that you have so they feel like they have a voice at the table too. But ultimately keep them undistracted, keep them focused and be that shield for them. What is the role of a product manager in a small startup versus a big tech company? I have a whole video about this, so go and check that out. But in summary, startup, you're gonna be a lot more hands-on and versatile. You'll probably be wearing many hats and doing anything and everything that is required. In a big tech company, you can be more specialized and really focus on your product craft because you probably have people in a lot of the other cross-functional areas that you need to work with. There's pros and cons to each. What is the typical product manager career progression? I have a video coming out soon all about PM career progression, so subscribe so you don't miss that video. But in summary, it goes something along the lines of associate product manager to product manager to senior product manager to group or lead product manager. And then you start entering a lot more of the leadership roles. This could be director or head of product, senior director, chief product officer, VP, so on and so forth. Take labels, in my opinion, with a grain of salt. What is most important is the work you are doing, the scope that you own, the influence that you can have, what you are launching to market, what you are learning. But of course, it is helpful to understand this landscape especially if you have aspirations to really progress and advance your product career.
What is a product strategy and how do you create one? I have a whole video dedicated to product strategy. So go and check that out for a more comprehensive overview. But essentially a strategy is defining what you want to achieve as a business and how you plan to get there through your product. There are so many frameworks, tools, and resources to help create a strategy. Anything from as simple as a Google slide to a strategy one pager, to a whole slide deck, to a written word document. How you create your strategy does not nearly matter as much as just putting those thoughts down on paper, putting those plans down on paper, and socializing them with your relevant teams. What is a product roadmap and how do you create one? I have a couple of existing videos talking about product roadmaps. So go again to those for a more detailed overview, but essentially a product roadmap is the tactical and practical steps you will take to achieve that strategy over a period of time. What is the work you are going to do? What are the initiatives that you have? What does that timeline look like? And what will be the customer value coming out of that work? What have you prioritized? and what are the milestones? How do you ensure alignment between product and business goals? First and foremost, your product goals should stem from what the business's goals are. So really you should be starting at a place where you are already aligned and making sure you don't stray too far from that. If there needs to be a change to the product strategy and the product goals, you need to check in and make sure and communicate with whoever is necessary that it is still relevant to help achieve the business's goals. And if not, it still makes sense to do that. And if the business strategy changes for whatever reason, you need to review and reconsider your product roadmap to make sure it's still relevant work that you are doing. Having a regular cadence, whether it is a meeting or it is something written, whether it is a review on a quarterly or monthly basis with relevant business stakeholders can be a really effective way to make sure that alignment is staying. How do you manage dependencies in a product roadmap? Identify those dependencies early first and foremost. Creating a roadmap can take a lot of time and weeks and months in some cases. So make sure you are having those conversations as soon as those things come up. Then ultimately you need to look at what the business priorities are. Communicating dependencies and making it really clear on your roadmap and your delivery timelines is very important. Tracking those dependencies is also really important because if you are planning something based on when a dependency will be ready for you, but that changes or your timeline changes, those things need to stay connected to each other. This is a really good example of where a project manager can come into play to help make sure everyone is on the same page with dependencies. What are the skills that a product manager needs? You need the hard technical skills, you need the soft skills. These ones, much harder to learn and craft and refine. So focus on this because this is what will set you apart. Overall, you need to be super adaptable. You need to be able to multi freaking task. You need to be comfortable being challenged and questioned and justifying yourself. And you should be comfortable leading. How do you prioritize the backlog? Features, tasks, etc. Prioritizing is not straightforward, but you can use some simple frameworks to help you get started. Keep in mind every framework Work has its own limitations, so be aware of that and make sure you always keep in mind what the business's goals are and what your own judgment is. If you understand your domain and your product and your customers really well, you should have a strong sense of what it is that you should prioritize. Then you need to weigh that up against a number of other factors like effort to implement, what customers are asking for, what's happening in the market, any other trade off to doing this versus that, so on and so forth. So it's not black and white, but look to your business strategy to help make those decisions where it's really hard to prioritize what you should or shouldn't do. What tools do product managers use? Here are some of them. The main categories of tools that a product manager would be using, something to help manage delivery, something to keep a track of product backlog and customer requests, something to document, write and present things, and probably some kind of dashboard to help monitor product metrics. How do you manage a backlog effectively? First and foremost, a product manager should not manage the backlog completely independently. Yes, you can absolutely own that, but make sure your engineering team understands the state of the backlog and why it is the way that it is. Work with your engineering counterpart to set up the right format and layout 
and approach to reviewing the backlog with the team. It's something you might not do with the entire team. You can do it just with one or two key people from your engineering team. And if you have a really small team, maybe it is something you just do yourself, but you need to set up a cadence and a format that works well for you and your engineering counterparts. There is no set way to manage a backlog effectively. I would say, make sure you understand what is in it. Backlogs can become really out of control very quickly. So take away the stuff that is outdated and irrelevant. Don't hold on to it because chances are you're not gonna get to it. Secondly, partner with your engineering team to come up with a format, a cadence, and an approach to grooming that backlog. Typically, this would be every two weeks, but it really depends on the nature of your company, your team, your products, and what you are working on. So keep it up to date and then work with your engineering team to figure out the best way for you guys to collectively stay on top of what it is. Backlogs are often used as just like an exhaustive wish list. So cull that shit as fast as you possibly can because chances are you are not getting to do the things on that list, most likely ever. What are some free product management resources? I'm so glad you asked. There are a heap of free resources like these ones. I will leave a link to all of these below. Also a special shout out to my own channel, which you are currently watching, subscribe, because I have free resources and videos like this all the time. I also have a bunch of templates on my gum road, and you can also check out my TikTok if you would like. What is the product development life cycle? The product development life cycle is the process from ideation all the way through to launch of a product. I have a whole video dedicated to the product development life cycle, so go and check that out. How do you gather and incorporate customer feedback? You can gather customer feedback through the traditional primary research methods like surveys and interviews, maybe focus groups. If you are building a new product and you have some wireframes or designs, you can set up some sessions for customers to walk through those designs and do some validation on them. You can partner up with your designer or if you have a researcher to do that, or you can also embed feedback mechanisms into your product. This might be a button to leave feedback. It could be a rating that a customer can give. The most important part of gathering feedback is you have somewhere to actually collect it and make sense of it. Whether that goes into a Miro board or a backlog, or it goes into a dedicated tool like product board that is designed for customer feedback. Once you've gathered that feedback, make sure you put it somewhere that you can use it in a meaningful way so you can actually act on that feedback. And you'll act on that feedback in an agile way while you are planning sprints, there might be small bits of feedback that you can incorporate over gradually over time and other feedback will be something that is a bigger initiative and you can input that into your product roadmaps. How do you handle feature or scope creep? Ruthlessly prioritize and only include something if there is a strong rationale and justification for doing so. Also consider what you might be trading off or compromising on by introducing something else. This could be quality, this could be time. What is a minimum viable product? A minimum viable product is the most basic version of a product that you can give to customers for them to test, validate assumptions, and prove product market fit. How do you validate a product idea before development? Do market research, talk to people one-on-one -on -one, or maybe in groups. Use tools like usertesting.com if you have to. You could even make fake landing pages to see if people are signing up. You can set pre-orders as an example or build some sort of marketing campaign to create hype and see if people are showing interest. You can leverage wireframes, high fidelity mockups, and also prototypes put them in front of potential customers and get their feedback to validate whether this is something worth actually pursuing. How do you handle technical debt? Firstly, a product manager should absolutely understand what technical debt their products and their team is dealing with. It is very important to understand the impact technical debt can have on future product work you are doing, on customers, on reliability, on security, and possibly even scalability. There are a lot of non-functional impacts that technical debt could have. Moreover, it might actually just slow your team down and in many cases make them pretty unhappy. So it's really good for you to understand. To manage and handle that technical debt, partner with your engineering team to truly understand the value of paying down that technical debt. Question them ask questions and be curious about all the different scenarios that may play out if you do or do not work on that technical debt. 
try and tie things back to customer value or business value. Even though technical debt is technical work, a product manager needs to be able to justify in terms of business and customer value why an engineering team is spending some of their time and capacity on something that isn't directly customer value adding. How do you prioritize customer requests? This is no different to prioritizing your backlog. Balance customer feedback and requests with business priorities and business goals. What is a user story? As a someone, I want to do something so that I can do X, Y, Z. A user story is a brief description of a feature from a user's perspective. I, as a YouTube creator, want to understand my audience demographics so that I can cater my videos to who is watching. Something like that. <laughs> What is a product requirements document? AKA a PRD is a document that outlines the product requirements, scope, specifications, and features of a product. I have a whole video dedicated to product requirements, and I also recommend checking out Chat PRD, which is a new AI tool for product managers that helps you with the requirements process. How do you define and measure success for a product? By setting key performance indicators, KPIs. These should be aligned to the goals of the business. This also means making sure your product is able to track all of the metrics that will contribute to measuring these KPIs. What are some examples of KPIs used to commonly measure success? Some really basic ones are user adoption, user engagement. Some, some common ones that can span any product include user adoption, user retention, revenue, customer satisfaction. But then depending on your specific product, there'll be a whole set of other KPIs that you can layer on top of a lot of these common ones. I highly recommend this book by Amplitude, which is called The North Star Metric, which is all about how you can set KPIs for your product. What is the role of data in product management? Needless to say, data can drive product decisions. It can help you understand who is using your product, where they are coming from, how they are using it, what aspects of the product are they not using, patterns and behaviors that otherwise would be hard to understand. But make sure you use product data along with your own judgment, along with other qualitative feedback and input and information you are getting from other sources. How do you conduct market research? Using the standard primary and secondary research methods. Surveys, interviews, focus groups, trying competitor products, understanding market intelligence, signing up to a lot of platforms that give you market intelligence reports, using competitor products directly yourself, and using data that you are already collecting from your products. I would also add using AI tools as best as you can. How do you conduct competitor analysis? First and foremost, you need to identify your competitors and you should do this on an periodic basis because your competitors can change. You can go and do a SWOT analysis or a general review of your competitors, but I recommend also using their products to understand really what the user experience is and how it's different to yours. Thirdly, you can go and look at the feedback your competitors are getting. This could be just general reviews online. It could also be tools like Trustpilot, or it could be the feedback and community forums that your competitors have, which are usually fully publicly open. And if you're working on a really big initiative, there are companies like Gartner Research that you can hire to actually go and do a bunch of competitor research for you. And of course, use AI tools now as well. What is customer segmentation? Dividing your customers up into logical groupings based on common characteristics, demographics, or behavior and usage patterns. Customer segmentation will be really helpful for your go-to market plan when you are deciding how you want to push your product out to people because your messaging and how you are reaching customers could be directly informed by who they are and what segment they fall into. Your customer segmentation will often drive how you communicate with your customers, whether that is sort of ongoing communication, whether that is a change you're making to the product or whether it's a brand new thing that you are releasing. It's really important to understand where those customers are and how they can be best approached. What are the biggest challenges in product management? People. I think it's people. You can work through everything else. Prioritization is difficult because everything seems important but you can prioritize. There are ways in which you can work through that. There'll always be a trade-off. So trade-offs are also very challenging, but again, you can work through that and make a logical decision, a logical, rational decision. Getting people aligned 
it's influencing people, it's making different people with different incentives and different disciplines and different cross-functional areas with different motives. A breadth um, in line with what it is that your customers want and that you want to do. How do you deal with conflicting stakeholder interests? Keeping everything very focused on the customer and keeping everything very aligned to the business goals and strategies. If you keep things factual and justified based on those two goals, then any stakeholder conflict should not matter because you are making the best decision for the customer and for what the business needs. Back yourself with data, research, and be able to articulate your rationale very, very well. How do you handle product failures and setbacks? Learn from them. That is the only thing you can do. Learn from them in terms of the customer's experience. Learn from them in terms of how your team executed and delivered. Do team retros, do product reviews, and just incrementally improve. Embed that into your culture for your team and for your broader company. Iterate and improve. Being agile can really help with this because you don't go too far, so you don't fail too hard, even though that can still happen. Take incremental steps, release incremental value, learn from that, get the, get the feedback loop going, incrementally release again, get the feedback loop going. How do you foster innovation in product development? I think this comes down to encouraging people to be creative with solutioning, having a culture that fosters experimentation and supports it. This could be things like hackathons, for example, and collaborating. You can be a lot more creative and a lot more out of the box if you put different types of really smart people together, put design in a room with really technical engineers, someone who's really good with data, with someone from product, who has a really strong business mindset. Unfortunately, this has to often come from top down because as a team, you have things to deliver and you don't always have the time to experiment. But if there are ways in which you can do that in the smallest possible way incrementally, then try and build that into your sprints and your delivery. How do you stay updated with industry trends, innovations, and competitors? Curiosity, be curious, ask questions question why. I'm not going to list tools and resources and links here because there is a plethora of information available to you to stay up to date. But I think the curiosity is more important because if you are curious, if you're naturally curious, you already know this, you will go and source that information. But be open to it. Try things. Think creatively. What is the role of artificial intelligence in product management? I have a whole video dedicated to AI in product. It's a bit outdated now and I might do a new one soon, but I think artificial intelligence will help to take over a lot of the tactical work a product manager does. You know, writing requirements, writing specifications, writing messaging, getting a lot of that stuff started that you don't have to do from scratch so that you can focus on the strategic stuff, the, the creative solutioning, influencing and building relationships, etc. What is a product sunset? A product sunset is when a product is coming to the end of its life. It's often called a sunset because typically you have to manage your customers through a period of time where they will experience change going through the end of life of this product. You have to notify customers, you have to provide possibly an alternative solution for them. You have to minimize the impact they will it will have on them. And you often have to actually help them physically migrate off the product. Product management is not all about building shiny new products all the time. You do have to get rid of products more often than it's talked about. It's not talked about because it's not sexy, new and exciting that it is equally important to make sure you get rid of the garbage you have lying around that not enough customers are using, that is costing you too much money to run and maintain and is a pain for your engineering team and you have barely any customers using. Or there is a better solution for your customers and you wanna push them all to using that. And just like that, we are at the end of my somewhat rapid fire answering all of your most asked product management questions. If you got this far, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I hope this video was of immense value to you. If you want me to do a part two, or if you want me to do a rapid fire for something else like working in tech 
or non-technical roles in product, or if you want me to even drill down more specifically into a particular part of product or the de product development life cycle, let me know because I think this could be a really fun format for sharing a lot of information. And yeah, that is all for now. Leave me some comments with questions that I may have forgotten or I didn't answer and I will get back to you there. But until next time, I will catch you in my next video. Bye.